Hello there ladies and gentlemen, I'm Paul TX141 Walsh, welcoming you to an all new live World of Warships gameplay today on our channel. In this episode I'm sailing out in the tier 7 British premium free experience battleship known as the Nelson in a tier 8 domination game on the map north. To provide you with a quick synopsis of the gameplay and the things to look out for from a learning perspective, in my opinion this was a game where I got caught by surprise, in the fact that I decided to go to Objective Delta thinking that the majority of the enemy team was going towards objectives Alpha and Bravo, looking at the minimap, but as it transpires, a significant enemy force went to objective Delta, and I had to quickly react. The two key things to look out for over the course of this gameplay then, are firstly, my reaction to the enemy team being spotted at objective Delta, and the fact that I use a landmass in order to quickly beach myself, put myself in reverse, and pull distance from the enemy team, also giving myself cover from the incoming shells of the enemy's battleships in particular, and secondly, how I attempt to create a crossfire with my teammates as the enemy team push out from Objective Delta further into the northeastern corner of the map, particularly a crossfire between myself, a friendly North Carolina, and a friendly Shores. But with that, let's get to it. Yeah, it's here again. Good number of battleships to burn, large number of destroyers, pardon me, low number of cruisers. It's got fire prevention on this thing now. I suppose I could support the push into Charlie. Two for Bukis, so that's 10km torpedoes. I'm going to avoid 10km torpedoes with a very fast reload if he's got the stock call. And a mass, which is 8.5km? Or 8km, one or two. It's 8km on the Gerda. And normally it's an extra half a kilometre each tier you go up, so that's why I'm supposing it would be eight and a half. Gonna try and make the most of the forty six percent fire chance on this. Get some fire stoke. Alright, if you wanna toot your on. <laughs> Uh, it's pretty even on the destroyer front. I'll Kagera will be the stealthiest destroyer in the game if it's got the full concealment build. I'm not being spotted across the open gap right now, that's interesting. Oh, why not for the utter stupidity of it? Let's go kill the herd. Looks like the majority of the enemy teams all congregating towards Alpha anyway. Been spotted by a plane, so perhaps they sent something else other than just the hood this way. Yep, they have. Oh, whoa, whoa. He's coming on strong, but I've got a nice bit of beach to cover my uh, front. Oh, 
one full penetration. Nasty. Bane them on. Come on, keep coming at me. Thank you. It'd be a better idea to let them break out rather than uh, push. All right, we can heal now. Yeah, there we go. Enemy cruiser detected. Yeah, these ranges. Yeah, I can't afford to turn broadside. These ranges, I'd argue that armor piercing's gonna do a very good job if it hits. Did I hit the hip at and oh, I don't know what happened there.
<laughs> I'm getting all my health back again. That feels cruel, this. Put the fire out instantly, I believe. So let's get another one on there. Yeah, Superhill is active. Oh. <laughs> oh man, that was fun. And this was the day you almost defeated the Nelson. I don't know where he's going now, the uh, hippo. Oh. Oh, hello. Ah, dollocks. At least it's only one. Hull breach. We're taking on water. Problem solved, now we'll give this ample time to recharge for the Fiji. Mine. That's got to be the world's cheapest Citadel, 458 <laughs> Oh dear.
What a game. What a game. Not much damage, but definitely tanked a lot. And the enemy team really wanted Delta and to push out from Delta. Just didn't work out. So with the unexpected enemy presence that Delta quelled and the victory achieved, we can see that our battle performance amounted to a total damage output of 95,291 HP along the way picking up the heroic achievement of Dreadnought for receiving damage exceeding 120% of our ship's normal health pool from four more enemy ships and survived the battle. In coming on to the team scores, we can see that we topped our team in terms of base experience earned, picking up 1,681. As for our role over the course of this game, it can be split into two parts, the main part being assisting in the defence against the enemy's push out of objective delta, whereby the enemy team tried to push north eastwards and break out via that corner of the map. On a personal level, I was allowed to position my ship north of Objective Charlie such that I could angle my ship towards the threat in the northeastern corner and not worry about being punished on my exposed broadsides by any potential enemy ships south of Charlie. That's because through map awareness I noted there could be no enemy ships positioned to hit me on that side. There was nothing positioned south of Charlie because what wasn't at Objective Delta on the enemy team was at Objectives Alpha and Bravo. So therefore I could lower the amount of damage I take from the enemy ships pushing into the northeastern corner, keep my health up, and that would enable me to make my way into the second part of the game in terms of my role, whereby I could push into Objective Charlie, go after the enemy Admiral Hipper, and then carry through to taking Objective Delta back, assisting our mass, and bringing down the Fiji at the end. In coming on to our detailed report, we only have one key item to note here, and that is the amount of damage we received, 97,195 or in other words, 164% of our base health pool, which on the Nelson is 59,400. This quantifies our Dreadnought achievement and serves to highlight how we try to manage our health pool, particularly with the fires that are set on our ship, albeit there were less fires set than perhaps would normally be set because we've had the fire prevention captain skill at tier 4, but nonetheless we kept our health topped up, made the most of our super hill unique to the Nelson at tier 7 for a battleship and that allowed us to stay in the fight for a long period of time and gave us the confidence to make our push into Objective Charlie and then through to Delta at the end. And finally coming on to credits and experience earned, we can see that after additions and deductions we walked away with 270,299 silver credits and 5,120 commander experience. To conclude, hopefully today's gameplay has demonstrated that sometimes when you're sailing out in a slow battleship in World of Warships, the Nelson being a prime example, you're going to turn a corner and find yourself bumping into an unexpected enemy fleet. In this instance we bumped into four or more enemy ships and we had to make a quick choice. Did we push forward to try and bring down one or two enemy ships but sacrifice our ship in return, or did we try to use the resources around us to slow our ship, put it in reverse and get back to friendly ships in order to bring them into the fight and equalise the numbers? We put the latter option, using the landmass off to our starboard side in order to break our ship, pulling back and using that landmass as an additional cover in order to prevent the line of fire for the enemy team, particularly the enemy's Fubuki, the Japanese destroyer, which was putting up and potentially getting ready to throw a load of torpedoes our way, which would have done considerable damage. But in the end, by bringing our teammates into play and setting up a crossfire, we are able to quell the enemy threat and push away the danger at Delta. And so I've been TX141, and if you've enjoyed this video why not leave a like, comment or subscribe for future World of Warships videos on my channel. And as always if you're looking to get into World of Warships today, be sure to sign up using the link in the description of this video. It's free, it's a fantastic game, so what are you waiting for? But until next time, as always ladies and gentlemen, take care, and fair seas.